CataractCoach.com, a combination parts plan of a me and IOL exchange, but with a surprise of a hidden CTR. And we're with my good friend, Dr. Pradeep Prasad Pradeep. Let's start this fun video. Now, here we go. We're putting the trunk cards. Explain to me the trunk card placement here. Yeah, so um, first of all, I think doing a, a full pars plane of vitrectomy is a really good idea just to get all that vitreous out of the eye, prevent any entanglement of the vitreous with the lens. It's going to help decrease the risk for retinal tear, uh, certainly retinal detachment. And when the, the trocars are placed, it's, it's important to, have, to place it in a beveled fashion uh, so that this is going to be a self-sealing uh, incision. Now here we've got some triamcinolone. So obviously we're, we're going to do a complete vitrectomy here. Yeah, complete vitrectomy and, and particularly shaving uh, towards the anterior vitreous base, uh, especially where those uh, where the secondary lens is going to be fixated. You want to get all the vitreous out of that area right. to decrease the risk for vitreous base traction. Let's talk about the laser going on right here. You know, I don't usually, I don't routinely do a 360 pro prophylactic laser. I know some surgeons do. Uh, it may decrease the risk for uh, a retinal detachment, but I think if you just do a, a, a thorough uh, vitreous shave, and just look and see if there's wow. any peripheral pathology. Certainly, do a targeted laser. Yep. It makes a lot of sense. Well, we just saw the surgeon pull out a CTR. That was crazy. I didn't even know where it was hidden. Now, when CTRs fall back in the vitreous cavity, they might be very challenging to get at, right? Uh, yeah, it's just like it's just like explanting an intraocular lens. Gotcha. So actually, in some ways, it's a little bit easier because you can just grasp it and pull it up into the AC. It's, it's, it's flexible and easy to explain. Now, I think it's very important to emphasize we've got to make sure there's no vitreous entanglement of this lens. So I think one of the mistakes that an anterior segment surgeon like me would make would be trying to just do a little bit of an anterior vitrectomy and call it good enough and then yanking on the vitreous and then breaking the retina. Yeah, absolutely right. And that's, that's really the benefit of either performing a combined surgery or, or getting a, a, a retina colleague involved so that they can just completely clear out the vitreous. It's going to make this a lot safer. Right. No, no, for sure. I think long-term studies have shown that anterior segment surgeons doing Yamani or Yamane have actually a much higher risk of CME, cystoid macular edema. Yeah, and, and that's largely due to the presence of uh, vitreous-based traction. Um, the residual vitreous also may affect the, uh, the, the tilt of the lens. You know? mm. and so if there's any tilting and chafing of the iris, um, that can all uh, result in, in post-operative CME. Yeah, so now it's gonna, everything looks like it's cleaned up, so it's going to mark for a Yamane placement. And then this one, I typically have used a 30 gauge, that TSK thin wall needle. What about you? It looks like here's going to yeah, be a larger that's needle. That's going to give you the best, uh, the best uh, fixation of that uh, of the haptic. Uh, but you can, if you don't have a, a thin wall 30 gauge needle, a regular 30 gauge needle will not do. Uh, but you can use a 27 gauge needle as an alternative. Right. And I like this method too, putting the whole IOL on top of the iris first. Kind of just give it that stability. And now when you get the needle in, it's a lot easier to kind of thread that one haptic in. Exactly. And I think also one of the one of the key things here is to rather than uh, moving the haptic towards the needle, uh, towards the central visual axis, bring that needle towards the haptic. Oh, the haptic yeah. is what you're worried about. You don't want the uh, you don't want this. This looks like a PMMA haptic. You don't want that to get kinked or, or damaged. So just bring the needle to, to the haptic rather than uh, forcing the haptic towards the central visual axis. Right. I've seen cases where these PMA type haptics can actually fracture. And, that, and that, that's a whole headache. So here you go. Now, this shows the point. Like, look how far back in the vitreous cavity the IOL optic is sitting. So when you're doing these manipulations, this is why you need that full vitrectomy done. That's exactly right. And so now getting this outside the eye, then my most important pearl once you get this outside the eye is make sure those flanges are not just sitting under the conjunctiva. Make sure they're you know, kind of stuck within the sclera. Yeah, exactly. If, if there's any residual uh, flange that's in the subconjunctival space, it will erode and it's going to put the patient at risk for endophthalmitis later on. And you know, my final great pearl for this is, is share the love and the liability with the retina surgeon. So for these cases, I like to send the patient to the retina surgeon, tell them what IOL power I want to make sure the patient ends up myopic. And then in the post-op period, three months later, I can just do LASIK or PRK for the patient and then nail the refractive outcome. Absolutely. You know, one of my, one of my colleagues actually... Um, uh, showed a series of cases where he put in a light adjustable lens, scleral fixated a light adjustable lens, uh, which is a, another, another, so interesting, another yeah. interesting approach to get a, a good uh, post-operative uh, target. Yeah. Now here at the end, just a little bit more cleanup, it looks like, in the vitreous cavity, just to make sure there's no vitreous around? Exactly. Just clear up. And also any residual viscoelastic that's going to help uh, prevent any post-operative IOP spikes. Wow, looks great. So, the case looks fantastic. I like the suture in the main incision too. Pradeep, I want to thank you. Congratulations, Retina Rounds, well past 100 videos already, still growing. 
What an amazing channel. And again, if you want to submit your video to Camera Coach, go to our website. And also to Red Rounds, go to Red Rounds.